Well, unfortunately for you, you are going to be affected by this. On January 16th, 2025, the Apple of 3D Printing Bamboo Lab announced something that I really didn't think that I wanted to make a video about, but unfortunately, I feel like it affects way too many users. I'm Rem Thompson, this is Rem Thompson's Maker Shed, and today, hopefully, you're gonna learn something. Bamboo Lab, they've been around in the 3D printing space for a handful of years now, and they're not exactly strangers to controversy. It seems like they can't release a machine or do a firmware update wherein the entirety of the 3D printing world doesn't end up up in arms and divided on what exactly is going on. Well, on January 16th of 2025, they announced via a blog post that they're going to be making a new security update. And this update is first going to be available for the X1 series of machines. So that's going to be your X1 Carbon. If you remember way back when they first showed up on the scene, the original X1 and the X1E, which is the big industrial, when I say big, I mean in price because it's more expensive than an X1 Carbon and has most of the same features. I'm grossly oversimplifying, I understand, but that's not the point. And what is exactly is the security update going to entail? Basically, they're going to be blocking out third-party applications in the name of security. What that means is, if you run an X1 Carbon and you use a product like a Big Tree Tech Panda Touch to run your machine, or maybe a person who uses Orca Slicer to slice your prints, well, unfortunately for you, you are going to be affected by this. If you take the blog post at face value, Bamboo Lab is stating that the entire purpose of this update is to increase the security of the printer. They're trying to mitigate attacks and potential risk for the printers. This security update is going to really lock things down. As a result, there's going to be authorizations that will be needed when sending a print to the printer. If you use Bamboo Studio, which I imagine that most users, be it industrial or consumer in users, you're going to be using Bamboo Studio. Bamboo has been aimed at kind of entry-level printers all the way up to industrial and I have to imagine at this point, they have enough of the market share capped on entry-level 3D printers that it's not exactly going to be a shock that people just want to stay in their ecosystem and use the software provided by the company because it does everything that you really need it to do if you are just running a bamboo printer or two. Some of us have adopted Orca Slicer as our default 3D printing slicer of choice. And that's because Orca Slicer does give you a lot more control and there are a lot of additional 3D printer profiles that aren't included necessarily in mainline Bamboo Studio. Bamboo Studio is based off of Prusa Slicer, which is a fork of another slicer from back in the day. And Orca Slicer takes kind of the best of all the worlds because the slicer is open source, which means that if you as an enterprising individual wanted to maybe make some things and do some coding, you could actually help to improve upon the slicer. Orca Slicer has really, I think, become the default 3D printing slicer of choice for a lot of users, especially for people who are really into it from a hobby side, because there's a lot of testing and additional calibrations that go into it, and it just is a really pleasant use experience, especially if you already like Prusa Slicer or Bamboo Studio. One of the main benefits of these slicers has been the ability to send sliced 3D prints over Wi-Fi, which I regularly do. I will use my laptop to actually slice up a print and just send it to the printers at home using, you guessed it, Orca Slicer. Orca Slicer is actually going to be locked out from being able to directly send 3D prints over the network to your favorite Bamboo X1 series machine. And Bamboo has stated that as time goes on, a similar update is going to roll out for the rest of their 3D printers. If you are an individual who just uses Bamboo Studio for all of your slicing, chances are you're not going to be affected by this. As a part of this update, Bamboo Lab is basically saying that this is going to affect critical operations that require authorization of the printer, which include binding and unbinding the machine from your account initiating the remote video process, so if you want to view your prints from on the go. Performing firmware upgrades, which, okay, I'll give you that one. Block out a third-party application from firmware upgrades. That does make sense. Initiating a print job, which basically means you can only start a 3D print on your bamboo printer by SD card, 
Bamboo Handy or Bamboo Studio. And controlling the motion system, so your fans, your hot end, your motors that move your carriage and bed around, and the AMS multicolor units, which in the scheme of security, I will give them this. I don't want some bad actor being able to access my 3D printer remotely while I'm not around. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. At face value, they are doing this to protect you, the end user of these machines. One of the biggest ramifications of that is actually going to be inhibiting the creativity and ingenuity in the 3D printing space that's made it what it is today. 3D printing as a whole is largely based on the concept of open source and sharing your designs with others. And personally, I don't feel as though there's any issue with monetizing something like the 3D printing world. That's how businesses happen. That's how development happens. If it wasn't for monetizing these open source designs and 3D printers, then as time has gone on, we would have had a lot less development. I don't love the fact that Bamboo Lab is locking these things down and restricting them. They are making a safer, more locked down ecosystem for you as the overall end user if everything goes as according to plan. However, it is going to put a hamper in some of this overall innovation and community that we see. Bamboo as a whole, their printers are closed source and there's a lot of propriety going on. And while I'm generally not a fan of propriety, I would be completely lying to you if I told you that my bamboo 3D printers are not the most used ones in my workshop. They're my workhorses. They're responsible for the best looking 3D prints I've ever had in my life. I know that if I send a print to one of my bamboo printers, it's just going to go. Unfortunately, I use Thorca Slicer to send those 3D prints. As we've learned with other scopes of technology, by not doing updates, you're exposing other security risks. The reason the devices get firmware updates as time goes on is more than just to give you bells and whistles, it's also to give you security. The longer that an existing piece of software or firmware is out on the market, the more time that bad actors have to figure out what exactly is going on. Which is why a handful of years ago it was such a big deal that cell phone manufacturers that actually design operating systems started making commitments to producing security updates for longer and longer times. So that way people who don't upgrade their cell phone every year, me, don't have to worry as much because they can own a device longer and it'll still receive regular security updates, patching exploitable holes in the code and all sorts of other fun, crazy stuff. So that way bad actors can't access your devices. Not updating your 3D printer that's connected to your network is only a solution for so long. You could go completely old school with it and you could just choose to take your 3D printer completely offline and go back to using a micro SD card like it's the Stone Ages. Unfortunately for you, that is inconvenient as all get out. As somebody who's been 3D printing since 2017, I can tell you that constantly dealing with little tiny micro SD cards and full blown big boy SD cards becomes a nightmare. You drop them, you lose them, you're creating wear and tear on a pretty sensitive component and flash storage like an SD card isn't exactly known for its reliability and repetitive use. They're fragile and they're prone to breaking and they're easy to lose. So let's be real, most of us who are not in a security restricted environment are probably going to want to utilize all of the networking features. What are our other options? Well, I suppose you could ditch your bamboo printers and switch to Creality or Anycubic has some pretty cool offerings coming up. I pre-ordered a Cobra S1. The new Prusa Core 1 looks very promising. I have one of those on the way as well. Let's be real, not everybody has the money to just drop on buying a bunch of new 3D printers, especially if you have an established ecosystem. And if you have really have your heart set on using Orca Slicer, surely there's some way that you can send 3D prints over the network to your machines? Well, there is. Any of you who have been in the 3D printing space for a long period of time surely remember Octoprint. Octoprint was one of the first widely available ways of being able to connect your 3D printer wirelessly over the network using a Raspberry Pi or similar single board computer. What it really is is a way of interfacing with your 3D printer over the network. You slice your 3D prints in your slicer of choice, upload them to Octoprint, and then tell it to go. You might be asking yourself what exactly does Octoprint and 
reminiscing about the good old days have to do with this security update that's going to make your life potentially more inconvenient. Bamboo is rolling out a new piece of software, which is currently in beta as of the time of filming. It's called Bamboo Connect, and it's actually kind of cool. The Bamboo Connect piece of software actually allows you to take your already sliced files and upload them directly to your Bamboo 3D printers. And it does a little bit more than that. What's really interesting is I personally am going to be using this regardless of what happens with the state of this update situation because you can actually use it as a kind of print farm manager. So when you first open up the piece of software after you're logged in, you'll be greeted with your list of connected Bamboo 3D printers. And it gives you statuses about each of them. Is it running? Is it online? Is it offline? And you can upload your G-code files directly there. Even cooler is you can actually dive into the individual controls of the 3D printer. So you can use Bamboo Connect to control your machines. And when you have a really neat little dashboard where you can see what all of your 3D printers are doing, that does make life convenient if you have more than a couple and they're not exactly in arm's reach. I feel like Bamboo Connect is actually something that print farm operators are going to find a lot of value in as time goes on. And it's still in its infancy as of the time of filming this video, it is in public beta. I do believe that as time goes on, there'll be a lot more features and potential that could be fleshed out from this. It is a promising piece of technology. Now, in my opinion, a really cool alternative to this would have been maybe give us a farm view in Bamboo Studio, where we can view all of our printers easily that way instead of having to click the little drop down. But, you know, you're gonna take what you can when you can get it, so to start, now this video is not intended to be a hit piece or me coming after Bamboo because I very much still enjoy my Bamboo machines and personally I'm incredibly excited to see what they have coming next when their next big 3D printer release happens, hopefully very soon. However, I do want to spark a little bit of a conversation. It's not all doom and gloom either. Bamboo has been in communication with Soft Fever, who is the one who heads up the entirety of the Orca Slicer kind of project, and it sounds like based off of Bamboo's communications that the talks are going well and that we will be able to get our Orca Slicer integrations back very soon. However, there still has to be permission granted from Bamboo. And with them being a large company, it sounds like they potentially have the ability to revoke that access. So, you know, you kind of got to keep an eye on this situation. In regard to the other third-party programs and applications that take from the backbone of the Bamboo communication system, I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen with those. It's going to be a really interesting thing to kind of follow along with and see what happens. I do want to start a conversation in the comments. Do you like this idea, this approach that Bamboo is taking to try to make things more secure by adding more restrictions? Or are you more of a full send, I'll figure out how to fix it myself kind of person? Do you want the access? I want to know genuinely what your thoughts are. Let's please keep the conversation civil. We do like to keep things as inviting for all audiences as possible. So if you can't be civil, maybe just don't leave the comment. If you're interested in learning more about this particular topic of conversation while you're working on forming your opinion, I will leave Bamboo's original blog post as well as a really interesting Hackaday article linked in the description below. So that way you can really dive in and make an educated opinion for yourself. Don't just take the opinions of one person standing in front of a camera talking as the only way that you form an opinion about this. It's not my intention to form a lynch mob. It's not my intention to make people irate and aggravated. I just want to share the news and talk about this topic with other people. A lot of these 3D printers are being used in environments where they're particularly vulnerable, like schools, and a lot of us are using them in our homes. And if somebody gained access to your 3D printer via your home network, well, that could be detrimental and could cause serious damage either to the machine or potentially your home. Things like fire would be my biggest concern or on the small side, just sending your Z-axis into Z-negative China and causing physical harm to your 3D printer on potentially the better side. Or heck, 
even launching unauthorized prints. You might come home and your machine is just running. Why would somebody do that? I don't know, but people do things to mess with other people and bad intentions all the time. I think Bamboo is genuinely trying to fix what they deemed as security flaws, and some folks may think that they're not exactly going about it the right way, but I want to know what you think. Of course, the best way that you can support this channel is to like this video, share with a friend, and join the conversation by dropping a comment down below. I want this video to see a bunch of eyes and maybe we can have some good productive conversation. I wanna give a huge shout out to all of the people who have been with us over the last couple of years as we've been producing videos. The channel recently hit a pretty impressive, in my mind, milestone of over 2,000 subscribers and I am incredibly grateful for that. To every person who watches the video, subscribes and shares, I'm eternally grateful and I couldn't be more grateful for those folks who have chosen to support the channel financially by joining the YouTube membership program. And your particular contributions do go a long way for enabling us to continue making content like this. I know the video schedules become a little bit erratic lately because life gets in the way. I still have a 9 to 5, so does Camera Mambo. Our fun channel isn't paying the bills as of the moment, but we do still love to make these videos for you guys. and. I want to keep doing it. So as 2025 rolls on, it is my intention to get back to producing videos with a regular cadence. And we do have a couple of really cool machines coming in soon. So be on the lookout for some unboxing live streams and some print and chills, things like that. I definitely want to get back involved and I missed hanging out with you guys.